Hey, Steve Kirby here, and in this video, I'm going to show you all the new features in Limba version 1.5. So the first change we've made in 1.5 is that we no longer have just a single length property for the whole limb, and then it's kind of bent around the point that's specified using the center ratio. We now have two separate length properties, one for the upper half of the limb and one for the lower. And initially that seems a little bit counterintuitive, but what it allows you to do when you're animating is to foreshorten one half of the limb really easily. Uh, so here in this example, I've got this guy and he's lifting this box up above his head. And I don't really like the way that these elbows are kind of bulging out to the side when he's got his arms down. So in 1.5, what I can now do is I can go to where he's got it up in the air like this, set a keyframe for these upper length properties. And then when I come down to here, I can just dial those down. And you can see that what it's doing is making the length of the upper part of his limb, that's his kind of bicep, much shorter, but it's just leaving the lower, up the, the forearm at exactly the length that it specified before. And if I just easy ease all these um, keyframes at the top here and preview it, you'll see that as he lifts that box up, his arms stay pretty much uh, vertical and sort of parallel to the sides of the comp. If I uh, switch to this other comp here and show you this little football character I've got. So I'll preview this and at the moment he's just uh, kicking the ball and his legs are constant lengths. But as he raises this uh, leg up to kick the ball, I think it would probably be better if this um, foot was tucked behind the knee rather than keeping it in this kind of paper cutout way where the calf has to stay a constant length. So I'm gonna set a keyframe on the lower length of this left ankle, bring it here to where it's raised up and dial that way down, which is gonna, because we're on FK, uh, sorry, because we're on IK here, it's gonna mean that the knee comes up. And then as he comes down again to about here, I'll paste that full length version and maybe just ease that as well. And so now when he kicks it, that foot really kind of tucks in behind a knee, which is kind of helping to sort of sell the idea that he's gonna get a bit of kind of curl on this ball maybe. But we can take that sense of space and apply it to other limbs to accentuate it and sort of improve the animation. Um, so on the right wrist here, I can take this lower length um, and what I want to do is sort of somewhere here where he starts to swing it around his um, abdomen, I want to foreshorten it so it doesn't go quite so low. Still want it to be full length when it comes out the other side though. So I'm just going to first of all set another keyframe here. None of these are actually really uh, interpolating at the moment. But if I come in between the two and dial this down so um, that hand kind of looks like it's coming out towards the camera more because the forearm's getting shorter. Uh, possibly starts a little too soon. I'll just shift those over. And then when it comes back in this settle here, I'm also just gonna shorten that a bit more like that. I'm gonna make sure they're all eased and preview that. And now you can see that there's just a subtle sense that the arm is moving towards the camera as well as across his body, which is, I think, probably more how it, how it would move uh, in a real person. And so these kind of little changes on certain moves uh, sometimes can be very subtle, but they do help to sell certain types of movement. A lot of people really like the ability to blend between IK and FK in the first version of Limba. And so we thought to ourselves, well, what else can we uh, enable that ability to blend or to use sliders for that would be useful when people are animating. And so the first thing that we've done is that we've enabled blending for auto-rotation um, properties, which we call rotate start and rotate end. Um, so it, uh, the way it worked before and the way it works in all the other tools uh, in After Effects that, that will do IK is that your rotate end, your auto-rotation property is like a switch that goes from on to off. 
And so you can either have your foot planted to the ground plane like this in a walk cycle, and that's uh, rotate auto rotation is off and then when you kind of flip it on it becomes auto rotated to the leg itself and what can happen if you've ever animated a walk cycle like this is that you get one frame where there's a little bit of a snap and you can kind of see it here where that those toes just suddenly flip down below the ground plane uh, of course, I can move where that is in, in time and that might help a little bit, but I'm probably going to end up with a situation where I need to also keyframe the rotation of the foot um, in order to match that kind of flipping that happens with the auto rotation. Uh, but now with Limba version 1.5, that rotate end property isn't just a switch anymore. They don't have to be hold keyframes. So I can make this one linear and that's where it's fully uh, rotated to the leg. So I'll pull that over here to where the ankle is going to be up uh, behind him. And then here where it's on the ground plane, I will set that to zero, but I'll make that um, a linear keyframe as well. And then now as I move between the two, you can see that that auto rotation kind of comes on gradually throughout that uh, part of the cycle, that little kind of transition there. Um, and it doesn't really look like his toes are planted to the ground, but that's just a matter of tweaking the, the timing. So I just pull that keyframe one uh, frame backwards. It's now almost um, like the toes are just stuck to the ground throughout the movement until he fully lifted off the ground there. And then that weight at that point would all be transferred to the other foot. And if I preview that, you can see that looks a lot better than it did before. Uh, we've also enabled blending for the clockwise property, which is uh, dictates whether your limb bends out to the left or bends out to the right. So here, this little uh, mouse character, I've just animated him moving in a kind of sidestep to face from one side of the um, comp to the other. And uh, it's pretty simple and straightforward. There aren't a huge amount of keyframes. Most of these are actually on his body. But uh, you know you can see this clockwise property here on his ankle. Let me just turn those back on. Uh, you can see as he lifts that foot up, the wrong one there, uh, it goes from being fully clockwise on 100% to uh, minus 100% there. And that makes these kind of uh, turns way easier to do. If I come over here to where these two keyframes are, you'll see that I can just dial them smoothly from one to the other. And all that really does is it just shortens those limbs around the zero point so that they will be the length, uh, that is the distance between the, uh, the two controllers, and then bends them out the other side when you go to minus 100%. Uh, in this case, the feet are also flipping automatically because it's a function that's built into this uh, custom limb that I'm using. Uh, so that's really handy too. Um, there are some changes to the UI panel here that we've made, which hopefully also improve the usability. The button that uh, used to be called swap is now called replace, just I think a better name for what it actually does. The um, plus and minus size button is a new thing that we've added, which will allow you to make your controllers bigger. And if you hold down alt, smaller so if you're working on a really small comp or a really big 4k comp you can make those controllers whatever size works for you there's a slightly hidden feature which is that in the past your controllers uh, had this kind of dynamic color changing to them so you can see as i stretch his arm out here it goes uh, from green to blue and then red and if you're previewing your animation and there's a lot of um, um, change between the green and the red, which, which can happen quite often. And it can be very difficult to actually sort of read your work when you've got these other kind of colors flickering on and off. And uh, that can be irritating. So what you just need to do now is hold down shift and click on the hide show button and it'll turn off those dynamic color changes for your controllers. So this is just now permanently green. Or if I want to come and change it to whatever color I want, I can do that. Um, I'm just going to undo those, come back there. Uh, there's also um, a uh, little button here which would look like a cog, which you can now click and that will bring up this Limba layer name editor. So 
uh, in version one of Limbo, instead of having uh, this drop down for the limb names, you had some text fields that you had to fill in with the words like hand or shoulder or whatever. And uh, if you're kind of going between uh, making lots of new arms and lots of new legs, if you're rigging up lots of characters in sequence like that, it's quite irritating to have to keep retyping the same words back in the boxes every time you want an arm rather than a leg. So now you just use this preset editor and you can uh, select arm and leg and change the words for whatever you want if you're using After Effects in a non-English language or um, name them something else if that makes sense for you like hand rather than wrist or whatever. You can change the order of these things and then they'll come up in this uh, drop down here and you can just select the one that you want. Uh, and when you hit new, the layers will all be um, suffixed with those words uh, and you can flip from arm to leg much more quickly and easily. All of the expressions in Limba have been completely rewritten and revisited and optimized since version one. So the whole thing was looking a lot faster and then we started adding all the new features in which kind of slowed it down again a little bit but we were able to give it something of a speed boost so if you're still using after effects cc 2018 or earlier the new version should be about 15 percent faster i think depending on your hardware but if you go into your project settings here and the expressions tab and enable this JavaScript, which is only in CC 2019 and onwards, you will get a much faster uh, response time in both, in both in terms of scrubbing in the timeline and also when you're rendering. That's uh, more down to Adobe than us, of course, but uh, it does work. All the expressions now work in CC 2019, um, as well as previous versions of After Effects. Uh, what else can I tell you about? Okay, so we've added a few new uh, custom limbs to the limb library too. So there's now a bendy bone, which uh, comes in handy when you want that simple kind of curved um, tubular sort of shape for your um, legs like this. So there's just one control on the limb layer itself for the joint tangent length, and that just takes it um, from being an ordinary bone to pulling out the kind of tangent handles on that point there. Uh, I try to do the same thing with the um, tapered limbs, uh, which as you can probably guess is a lot harder uh, until Adobe um, allow us to have uh, tapered strokes. So this is about as close as I could get with that. And it works kind of okay if, you're, if you've got it kind of stretched out quite long like that. If you pull it up tight, it goes a little bit funny. So that is a bit limited, but it works quite well for um, some walk cycles. The leg muscles is another new custom limb based again on a tapered limb, but with these uh, bulges here for the sort of shape of muscles. You could use it for arms as well, but I find it sort of works better for legs. There's quite a lot of controls down there to change where these bulges are along the muscles and how big they are, and you can kind of roll them from left to right. There's now a body moving compatible limb if you're um, exporting animations to uh, SVG canvas uh, JavaScript animations. This um, version of the tapered limb will work natively with body moving. You don't have to uh, bake your expressions anymore for this. And uh, it, unfortunately, that it's lost the color splits because the color splits completely rely on After Effects merge paths operator and uh, uh, Hernan Teresi has not been able to integrate merge paths yet into body moving, which he's going to do soon, I think. So uh, that would be great. And then they should just work natively at that point. In the meantime, if you're happy to not have the color split, then you can just use this one and that'll all work. Uh, I have completely rewritten the user guide. So that is way shorter, simpler, easy to understand and easy to get into than the old one. So if you found the old one a little bit too sort of extraneous, um, then try the new one. It's much better. It's also five pages shorter. Um, the bad news about the 1.5 update is that it's not compatible at all with version one of Limba. We tried to make it compatible in the sense of um, providing a button that would update limbs from version one to 1 
but that proved to be very very time consuming and we decided that the only way we could have done that would have been to charge for the update because it was going to take such a long time but we really didn't want to do that we wanted to make this a free update for you so that meant that we weren't able to implement a kind of update limb button so you need to make new limbs in version 1.5 and any limbs that you've already got in existing projects that were built with version 1 you'd have to use the existing version 1 UI panel to work with those limbs and copy and paste them and so on so you're kind of stuck in in one or the other ecosystem of 1 or 1.5 okay that's just about everything for this video uh, do let me know if you have any thoughts uh, or feedback about Limber and the way it works. You can just uh, find me on Twitter or my website and pop me an email. Uh, there's a Google survey that I'm putting out with the 1.5 download. It'd be great if you could just spend a couple of minutes to pop over there and answer some multiple choice questions about which features you do or don't use. And that will help us um, understand uh, the way that you, the users, are using Limber as we go forwards and develop it in the future. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.